All right, good morning everybody. Welcome to Across International's presentation day. So today we're about to showcase our RTF Autofeed series three zone 60 millimeter tube furnace. As we can all see here, the unit is fully assembled and ready to be rocked in. So uh, I will walk you through some of the parameters of the equipment that we have here, including what materials are inside, how the machinery is used, and what applications in general we're looking for. So if you come closer over here and take a look, we have the main auger and the feeder right here, which normally works under the equation if you want to push the motor's material on the inside, or you can, you can feed from here as well. There's also a possibility of you to do vacuum feeding if necessary. We have a vacuum KF25 port right about here. And this is your gas injection port, so you can introduce inert gases into the atmosphere if needed. This is the screw feeding motor that pushes the auger inside where all the materials will be posted on the inside when the systems are running. So this is the feeder opening. This is the block to protect the systems from overburning. This is the main tube where the material will be processed and that's the exit outlet where the material will be recovered into the tank. So the unit is designed to be operated on a continuous feed system where you can continuously feed, raise the volume up and collect. The collection tank size for the current sizes are two liters. We have upgrade capabilities up to six liters, of, six liters to, for the systems to work with. So now I will go ahead and close the system so we can initiate some level of work around the machine. So this is your main electronics panel right here. This panel controls your feeder. This panel controls the rotation motion of your tube. These are the three controllers that individually control your heat zones, and these are the meters that indicate how much current is going to the system. So I'm gonna initiate contact with the machine, and I'm going to rotate the tube so you can see that the tube rotationary motion is working. So as you can see, the tube started to rotate. You can increase the speed and you can change directional. The gear is bi-directional, so you push the button down, it switches, it switches the other direction to be able to work with. Now, if you were to look at the main system, we're gonna raise it. The system is rated for continuous motion and operation. So the remote control will allow you to raise the systems. As you can see, the system is raising up. So it has a tilt angle of about 40 to 45 degrees for your normal apparatus to be able to collect your machine at the corner. So you can feed the materials, continuously spin while it's feeding, and collect it towards the end of your apparatus. While the system is still under vacuum, and your inert gas applications will still be active over time. So the main primary use case for the machinery is to dry out powders. In the, in the majority of the cases, the powder can vary between carbon, carbon coat, um, battery, anode, cathode materials, and it can also be used for biochar analysis and pyrolysis for the main systems, which is the most common um, application among these industry to be able to work with. So, you can dry out powder and collect the final assembly at the end while your systems are under vacuum and inert gas. This will continuously keep rising up until there's a safety switch on the inside that will engage. When the safety switch is engaged, that's the maximum tilt it'll be able to go. So we'll just give it a few seconds. So that is the uh, that is the maximum angle of inclination. So you're still be able to recover your materials. And once your material recovery is done, you can start to bring this one down by adding more material and collect it again. So I'll just push the down arrow and then just start to come down. As this one is coming down, I'll, I'll also introduce you guys to our controllers. Our controllers have the capability of being communicated with computer software while you directly log your data in and lifetime analysis. There is an individual sensor for each controller that is correlating over there. So you can collect data and lifetime analysis as to what temperatures are working in here. And you can set your programs and you can set your program temperature profiles, everything from the main computer interface, or it could be also done manually on the main side.
as you can see, as it goes down, it will create a small click noise. That's a safety switch we can trigger for the lowest uh, amount of height we can go up to. That's it. And that concludes the main presentation of the model.